court, but here we saw something completely different with Trooper Proctor, and that just, I think, would make anyone question what else was going on, what else is, is happening in this department, and that's what the defense has really leaned into. Yeah. Joseph Tully is watching along with us, and he's a criminal defense attorney in San Francisco, California. Joseph, what do you think of this question? The, the jury wanted, they wanted the actual report about the search that was conducted in the front lawn. Um, they, they didn't want to just rely on what people told them. They wanted to see what was written down at the time. So it's very common. A lot of times jurors want to see police reports, but, you know, in fact, they are hearsay. It's an out-of-court statement um, being offered for the, for, the, for the truth. If it didn't come into trial, then it's not evidence and the jury can't consider it. Although, you know, I, I've seen many uh, such jury questions. So it is very common. I think they want to uh, look at more evidence. They want to delve deeper into the situation and really figure it out. And you hit the nail on the head. This is isn't a defense of raising reasonable doubt. Uh, there's this is a defense of no, they're actually guilty. It's a criminal conspiracy to frame my client, and it, it, it's very dangerous to do that rather than just go with reasonable doubt. But nonetheless, this is where we are. Joseph, any predictions on what may happen next? We often see judges tell jurors, "You have what you have." continue to deliberate, which I can only imagine is pretty frustrating for a jury where they've come up with this question together, they've submitted this question to the bailiff, the bailiff takes it in, they're waiting, and they're brought in thinking they're going to get an answer, and the answer is go back. And not really even an explanation of you can't have this report because it's here, so you can't have this report because it's just you have what you have, continue to deliberate. What do you think might be a natural next question if we get one from this jury? Do you think they're going to want more testimony, perhaps, or um, anything? Just your thoughts. Sure, yes. Um, you know, this is actually what, what judges do. It's a safe thing to do. If they get too involved in, uh, you know, well, let, they ask for this, but let's give them that, then uh, they, they could get over turned and and the the jury's verdict is overturned and everything's in an upheaval it's a mistrial you know that kind of thing so i think uh you're right uh they will ask for maybe the next best thing well if we can't get the police report let's hear this witness's testimony let's hear a read back of this let's look at this uh you know piece of evidence that was offered you know a photograph a diagram that sort of thing six hours 14 minutes 31 days of testimony, Does, are, you, are you taking any, anything away from the amount of time that they've been working yet? And if it does extend into 20 hours, three days, four days, um, what would that be telling you? Well, again, this is a very extreme situation, and there's a danger in presenting uh, sort of what you believe to be the truth of, of, of corruption on the side of law enforcement to a jury. Again, the only bur the burden's on the government to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, and the defense only has to raise reasonable doubt. But they couldn't just kind of raise doubts, oh, are you sure about this, are you sure about that? Because the evidence they had implicated law enforcement and implicated the law enforcement in murder, a conspiracy, and a cover-up. So it's really hard to dial that back. The only thing that they could have done on the defense side is to remind the jury, remember, we're telling you this. But if we've uh, if we've raised a reasonable doubt in your mind, then you have to vote not guilty. This isn't a case of us versus them, them versus us. This is a case of you know is a reasonable doubt presented to the government's case, and we've met that burden. But so you know you just have very extreme, almost a, a powder keg ready to explode either way. And Joseph, I want to pause just for a second because we are getting some more information from our team on the ground. They wanted to clarify as much as possible, try to get a copy of that note that the jury sent earlier. That CERT team want to just give more information about it. So it's a specialized unit there in Massachusetts. The um, I mean, I have it here, the Special Emergency Response Team. And we did hear a lot about this emergency response team doing that search, so accurate in knowing that the jury is questioning the investigation. They did the grid search, shoulder to shoulder, going through that lawn in that condensed area. And I, I, I just, again, think it would be natural for them to want to see the report of those individuals, this specialized unit, and compare it with what we heard from all of these other troopers who were on the stand. Yeah. 
I agree. Because they want to know how much snow is on the ground. How much, if they were going shoulder to shoulder looking for using a leaf blower, digging um, with red solo cups and other items through the snow, um, they want to know more about it because you're getting both sides telling competing stories in their closing arguments. The defense is saying, oh, they did a great job, this inertial, initial team. You saw it, they had a leaf blower out. There's no way this large piece of the tail light could have been missed. Where on the other side, the Commonwealth saying, come on guys, it was, there was a blizzard that continued and the snow uh, was accumulating and it wasn't until it melted weeks later that they were able to find these items. <laughs> right, Joseph? Uh, yeah, I mean, you've summarized both sides, uh, you know, I, I think perfectly, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, you, you, you have completely different narratives here, completely separate, and it's really explosive on, on either side. All right, Joseph, thank you for all of your analysis as we are standing by waiting for any movement inside of that courtroom. We won't get any movement for the next probably 45 minutes because of that lunch break that all of the parties get to have, but the jury's still hard at work inside of that deliberation room. We're going to switch gears after this break. Coming up, our own Kelly Kraft is going to join us for a live update in the other trial that we are following, the Tennessee siblings who are charged with the murder of their own mother. That's next. Tonight on Closing Arguments, is Karen Reed a killer girlfriend or the scapegoat in an elaborate cover-up? We're breaking down today's closing arguments as deliberations get underway. Closing Arguments, tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. Ion kicks off the National Women's Soccer League, airing all season long. She scores! 